Hello, my name is Ron George, and I'm a Rheumatology Fellow at Duke. Today, we will review gout. Objectives today include a review of who gets gout, a brief overview of the pathophysiology in a typical patient, as well as criteria for diagnosis. Finally, we will cover the treatments of acute and chronic gout. Here's our outline, starting with epidemiology and moving into the pathogenesis of an elevated uric acid level. We will cover serum urate metabolism and why a urate crystal causes inflammation. I will then go over a case and talk about the common presenting symptoms and diagnosis, as well as the different types of gout. Finally, we will cover uric acid lowering therapy, including the uricocerix, as well as colchicine and NSAIDs. So who gets gout? Gout primarily occurs in men, but women who are postmenopausal can get gout as well. The chance of getting gout rises as we age and is seen more often in African Americans than Caucasians. Gout affects nearly 6.1 million people in the U.S. Serum urate is generated from the metabolism of purines via the enzyme xanthine oxidase. It is interesting that amphibian and non-primate animals do not get gout. This is because they have an enzyme called uricase that degrades serum urate to allantoin. Allantoin is then excreted by the kidneys. In humans, Excess urate is excreted mostly by the kidneys, with additional excretion by the GI tract. Humans lack the enzyme uricase for evolutionary reasons. When serum urate exceeds 6.8 mg per deciliter, the urate can come out of solution and deposit in tissue. What remains unexplained is why the vast majority of people with elevated serum urate never develop gout. Once uric acid settles into the tissues, it causes and propagates an inflammatory process. The inflammation is due in part to the activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. Activation of this complex of proteins leads to further activation of the immune system. Exactly how the inflammasome works is beyond the scope of this talk, but I encourage you to look it up as it has implications in many disease processes that involve inflammation. Clinically, the most common finding in a patient with new gout is pedagra, or involvement with inflammation and pain at the first MTP joint. Joints affected by gout are exquisitely painful, with descriptions of severe pain dating back to the time of Hippocrates. It is postulated that pedagra occurs and that gout has a predilection for joints due to lower temperature and peripheral body sites, making it easier for serum urate to crystallize. Of note, gout also tends to favor osteoarthritic joints, thought to be related to pre-existing joint damage and cellular debris. Gout can involve any joint in the body, and gouty tophi have been found in tissues throughout the body. Most commonly, gout involves joints of the lower extremities, but upper extremities are also frequently involved, especially the olecranon and bursa, which is a common location to find tophi. Patients may experience fever, chills, and malaise with gout attacks. Patients with gout often remark that the attack occurs acutely overnight and may wake them up with severe pain, and then they will be unable to walk in the morning. This is believed to be due to the intraarticular dehydration that occurs during sleep. When confronted with a patient you think may have gout, always remember to consider the differential diagnosis. In monoticular arthritis, one should consider infection, a calcium crystal-based arthropathy, such as CPPD or pseudogout, as well as a systemic inflammatory process such as rheumatoid arthritis. To diagnose gout, the gold standard is to evaluate the synovial fluid under polarized microscopy. Urate crystals are negatively bifringent under polarized microscopy. Polarized microscopy allows you to adjust the direction or plane of light as it moves through the slide. Negatively bifringent means that they are yellow when parallel to the beam of light. Beginning with hyperuricemia, when the serum uric acid is between 7 and 8 mg per deciliter, the incidence of gout approaches 30%. When the serum uric acid is higher, specifically over 9 mg per deciliter, the cumulative incidence is 22%. Once the first gout attack occurs, gout will inevitably progress without proper treatment. The first stage of gout is acute intermittent gout, in which acute attacks of gout punctuate time periods in which all joints are asymptomatic. The majority of gout patients have acute intermittent gout. The time period between attacks is known as intercritical gout. After a variable amount of time, patients with acute intermittent gout will progress to advanced gout. Advanced gout is defined as recurrent flares and progression to tophi despite adequate treatment. This type of gout is often termed chronic refractory gout. Gout is a curable condition if managed correctly. Treatment of gout is aimed at two goals. One, reducing pain and inflammation, while two, removing the offending agent, serum urate. By lowering the serum urate and creating a concentration gradient, crystallized urate diffuses out of tissues and into the bloodstream. Unfortunately, 
The shift in uric acid crystals out of the tissues and back into the serum can activate the inflammatory response, resulting clinically in what is referred to as a gout flare. The first line of therapy for gout is allopurinol. Allopurinol is a competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase, which thereby lowers the serum urate. Recall from an earlier slide that urate is produced when xanthine oxidase breaks down xanthine and hypoxanthine, which are both products of purine metabolism. It is very important to remember the risk of allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome, which is characterized by an erythematous rash, peripheral eosinophilia, fever, hepatitis, and acute renal failure with a risk of death. Allopurinol doses are titrated up to achieve a serum uric acid less than 6 mg per deciliter, with a lower serum uric acid level correlating with better clinical outcomes. Allopurinol must be willingly dosed as its metabolic end products can build up in a patient's system, leading to liver and blood count abnormalities. Probenicid can be used in patients with normal renal function. Probenicid inhibits the uric acid transporter urat one which is responsible for urate reabsorption in the proximal renal tubule. A 24-hour urine is recommended before starting probenicid to identify patients who are under-screening urate. In addition, patients treated with probenicid must maintain high urine flow through adequate hydration to prevent urolithesis as well as the need to alkalize the urine to decrease the risk for kidney stones or urolithesis. There are several pharmacotherapies to address the inflammation caused by uric acid crystals. For acute attacks, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, are recommended but should be used with caution in patients with cardiac risk factors or renal disease. NSAIDs do not have the ability to prevent gout flares. Colchicine is used to both treat acute attacks as well as a prophylactic agent when starting patients on urate-lowering therapy. Colchicine is cleared renally, so caution should be used in patients with renal insufficiency, and it is contraindicated in those with a glomerular filtration rate less than 30 milliliters per minute. Dosing for acute flares is 1.2 milligrams once in the form of 2.6 milligram tablets, followed by a single 0.6 milligram tablet an hour later. Prophylactic dosing is 0.6 milligrams by mouth either once or twice daily. Subcutaneous or IV colchicine should never be administered. Finally, for patients for whom NSAIDs or colchicine are contraindicated, oral glucocorticoids such as prednisone can be effective. Intraarticular steroids can be used as well, but care should be taken when using glucocorticoids in patients with diabetes. For our summary, gout results from elevated serum uric acid causing monosodium uric crystal deposition in joints. MSU crystals induce and maintain inflammation. A definitive diagnosis of gout by joint aspiration and demonstration of uric acid crystals on polarized microscopy demonstrates negatively bifurcent crystals. Consider infection in all patients with a monoarticular arthritis. Gout treatment is aimed at lowering the serum uric acid to less than 6 mg per deciliter and reducing inflammation. Thank you.